Hello, this is Honest GB Fan at the Panther Valley Railroad again. Uh, I was going to figure out for, um, I'm preparing my layout and, and uh, uh, creating it on uh, using SCARM, a very, very, uh, very good layout planning tool. Um, there's several videos on how to use that so on, on YouTube, so I'm not going to get into that aspect of, of things. But I did want to point out something that I it dawned on me some people may not know how to do and that's to figure out your grade percentage um, for your rises and, de and inclines and declines on your on your layout uh, it's pretty simple math but if you don't know how to do it then it's kinda intimidating anyways all you have to do is you take your vertical rise or decline in inches multiply it by, it by the length in inches that you have space to raise or lower it in and then you multiply that by 100 to eliminate the decimal points, and you have your grade percentage. Anyways, um, an example I'm going to use is uh, um, I use N scale, so the minimum I use is three inches to put a bridge over a, uh, uh, a layout, uh, a lower track, so to speak, or however you want to look at it. And I'm going to put down six feet as the length of the rise from the layout base, uh, the base of the table, up to enough room for that three inches for the, uh, to go over another track for the bridge to go over. Anyways, all you have to do is multiply, or I mean divide the three inches of the rise by the length that you're going to use. I'm going to put six feet because that's kind of standard probably on a four by eight table, the amount of space you might have, and which would be 72 inches. And all you have to do is divide that. Um, then multiply it by 100. What you come up with is 0.041666, and of course the sixes go on forever. And there's my math if you want to check it. Um, I haven't had my coffee yet. It's still over here. See, I'm not lying to you. <laughs> Anyways, so I'm not quite awake. So my math could be incorrect. Anyways, uh, 4.166 after multiplying it by 100, and of course I round it up to 4.17. Um, the reason I'm showing this is just because uh, that the math is pretty simple. Um, if you have to, you can use a calculator or just work it out. It's not that difficult, but at the same time, sometimes people don't want to deal with the, the time and they can just use a calculator. Anyways, another thing I would like to show is if, su suppose you have, want to build a helix and you're going to do a double deck. I'm not doing a double deck. I just wanted to create some staging area underneath my track my layout. Um, I don't need a lot of room, maybe five, six inches just to get my hands in there. And uh, it's not a not a full staging track. Basically, just what I want to do is make a... Um, I'll show you in a second. Anyways, again, if you have a helix and you want to put a, uh, a double deck track, um, some of them I've seen, at least for end scale, have been about 18 inches. I, would, I wouldn't go less than 24 myself. But some people, you know, space constraints and everything else... Um, uh, Anyways, you do the vertical rise and, of course, the length. So say you want that, that foot and a half, 18 inches, and you have roughly 16 feet for your rise, say a, a helix, and you want to do 16 feet. You multiply or divide into 18, the 192 inches, because 16 feet is 192 inches. There's your foot and a half rise to the next level. But what happens is you figure out that your grade is going to be 9.37. So you know that's just way too short. You're going to have to have a much, much longer run in order to reach the uh, the 18 inches. Um, a, a 9, well, I rounded it up, but a 9.4% grade is just way too, way too steep. Uh, some people will say 5% is okay. I don't really like that idea. But if you had to, you had to. Some, uh, some mining layouts and, and maybe logging and things like that can do that. But... But uh, hauling a long freight train, I'm, I'm not really sure, at least not an end scale. So what I did was, this is what I plan on doing. I have a room that is here. Let me show you. I have it here someplace. I have a room that is roughly, there we go. It's roughly 10.5 feet by 11.5 feet. And then this is the closet space I'm going to use for a yard eventually. So what I have is, what I want to do is start lowering my track in this area here, have it come down behind everything, uh, not necessarily in a tunnel or anything, but somewhere I can access in case something goes wrong. 
and then have it slowly drop down to about here to where it's down my five or six inches underneath the layout here. And then I can I can do things with it in this area here. Uh, a few staging tracks or something. Or even just create a, a loop that will come around here and come back and then come back up the track. And just for a... So the train disappears and you have a longer run. Um, I'm not sure if I put this in the right perspective here. Here, I'll put it this way. Uh, my layout does include... This is the Apple Valley uh, Railroad. I believe it's um, Hediger. Is that his name? Um, I hope I'm not getting that wrong uh, because this is a great layout uh, for this for the the size. But what I want to be able to do is run this if I'm by myself, and then use the whole track if I'm with my son or or another person. And this up here is I believe his name is John Allen. Um, anyways, the track plan is called the Time Saver. I made it bigger then it actually shows in the plan, but I want to be able to use it as part of my track layout. So what I'm going to do is use yard signs to mark the limits that are within the um, the, uh, the time saver puzzle. Uh, you should look it up. It's pretty interesting. It's just I just thought that it would be a fun thing to add in and in, make it an industrial area here, not just a, uh, a puzzle for the track plan. And then, of course, down here I'm going to have my town and, and everything else. But what I wanted to do was that, that loop or those staging areas. And I'm looking at roughly, I don't know, I figured it out for six inches. And here was what I was working on that made, it, that made me think about it. The, the room was roughly 10 feet on one side, 11 feet on the other, 10 feet again, and then the 5 foot yard work, maybe 6 feet in the closet space. I did 5 because I didn't want to get dig all the information out and remeasure everything and and uh, go back through my computer program to uh, scar them and figure out the exact I just wanted the exact distance I just wanted to to do this so anyways my vertical decline will be roughly six inches that's plenty of room to get my hand in there and the length is 36 feet uh, 10 by 11 by 10 by 5 36 feet multiply that by 12 you get 432 inches so the six inches to six inch decline, I got plenty of room in there. I could make this eight inches or something, but just for the for the math, I wanted to do this. Um, the six inches divided by four hundred and thirty two inches came to a a, uh, a grade of one point three eight eight eight. Of course, the eights go on forever. Of course, you can see that here with the uh, thirty eight forty and the thirty eight going to be forty if I continue on. Anyways. Uh, so the grade would be 1.4%. That's a much doable, more doable grade uh, uh, for my N-scale layout. And I'm just going to, I have access to it under the table. So if anything goes wrong, I can access that track as it's lowering down around the track. I don't like the idea of a helix. Uh, it just takes up too much space. So I figured why not just do it around the walls and have it come up underneath and... For, for my purposes, I'm not, I'm not using, um, uh, like I said, I'm not making a double deck layout. But then again, if I had the space, that might be a better way to do it than using a helix. Um, if you're going to rise it up, let me, uh, let me get a piece of paper here, see if I can. Well, anyways, you can have a, a mountains along the back walls of your, of your layout and have this, this incline going up uh, your entire room. And then up to the the second level, rather than using a helix, um, it's a little more complicated in how you design your layout. But at the same time, you don't have that helix taking up a whole lot of space. This would just be along the outer walls of your of your room or layout. I'm using it. I'm doing a sort of a uh, shelf layout. So for me, I have the, sh the walls here, and then again that closet space, which I'm going to use. Um, open up and, and use for it and then it's basically 30 inches 30 inches 30 inches and this needed more space so it's going to be uh, it's actually a little larger than the Apple Valley plan itself which was in HO uh, I believe it was 6 by 10 foot um, it's a really neat layout um, if you can you should you should check it out there are uh, videos on YouTube about it and uh, of course it was in uh, Model Railroad or Magazine I think it was like April 1995 or something like that anyways uh, that's how you do the grades, and that's where I'm at on my layout planning. This isn't really finished yet, but I like the concept. The yard work, I don't know. I'm probably going to redo that. I'll probably have the yard come down this way. But anyways, that's not needed right now on your, on your information here. So with that, again, this is Honest GB Fan at the 
Panther Valley Railroad, and you have a great day. Thanks a lot. Bye.